Two huge doubts in the banks that wouldn't let me sleep. I couldn't find a way out of it. I spent my time in depression and crying. I was really drowning in debt. I was a person who owed almost $200,000. I had a ton of debts for like 20 years. I was feeling down in the dumps. I started to let go, to leave behind the fears, to leave behind the doubts. I managed to free myself from everything from that heavy and painful burden. I felt calm and confident speaking to the Department of Criteria and presenting them with my payment proposal. I've already paid off all the debts and I almost have this house completely bought. I have enough money now because previously I didn't have enough. I had six investments. Imagine getting rid of a $200,000 debt and on top of that, having something to invest now. It's awesome, thanks a lot. It's a total blessing, and I mean like a really big one, like huge. I'm happy because I'm free. Hello, hello, welcome to our class three of the Intensive Biblical Finance Training Program. We're excited to have you here. How are you doing today? How wonderful that you're here with me today. In the topic of our class for today, we are going to talk about dreams. Yeah, inform me and type in the chat your current location and the place you are presently situated. I genuinely desire to check this out. I genuinely want to ascertain what your country is like. Send me a message, write it to me in the chat. I will examine it immediately. I am currently observing this location. Come on, come on, send me a message, type it in the chat and let me know which country you are from. We are currently examining a few more countries in this area. It's wonderful that you are here with us. And if you're just arriving here now at the Biblical Finance Intensive, I am going to talk about something very important you see. The Intensive is an intensive course, yes, unprecedented and free of charge, with a total of 28 classes that will have a beginning, middle and end, yes, and will be conducted in the area for a few days. So you have to check out all the classes here with me, yeah. We are currently in the first stage that started yesterday and classes are already taking place every day live at two different times, always with different content. Make sure to join us for these informative sessions. Let's remember that this is a preparatory stage for the second phase, which is also free and will be a practice with supporting materials for exercise and a closed community exclusively for participants. We will also have, yes, and these classes I am already teaching you how you can construct your financial life on the foundation of truth to achieve the modifications you desire so greatly in your life. I am providing you with the biblical basis of financial management in order for you to experience financial peace and flourish irrespective of the challenges that arise in your life. Because I'm aware that this can occur, you're already acquiring knowledge here on how to follow God's instructions in your financial matters. And I'm aware that by having your finances under control, it is possible to have additional funds and make investments in order to fulfill the dreams that God has for your life. Yesterday, look, look, you were here yesterday, right? Hit me up in the chat. I was right here. Write to me, me, me. Yeah, look, yesterday we discussed the biblical reasons why you should strive to be a responsible financial steward of the resources that God entrusts to you. All right. Yeah. Do you recall? And we also talked about how to have financial peace. If you haven't seen those classes yet, they're on the YouTube channel right here. Listen, this is of utmost importance. They will be off the air in a matter of minutes. So you should not miss this. So our class ends here today and come back to watch the first two classes. All right. So let us move forward together with enthusiasm. These prior classes provide us with the groundwork to discuss the present topic, which is the dreams that God has for our lives. Yes, there's some very rich content today, and our team created a video here to inspire and show it to you. What is going on with highly committed individuals who took the intensive and decided to build this foundation in their financial life? At this moment, I begin inquiring with you. Who would you be if you had no fear and possessed all the resources in the world? Who would you be? If you were filthy rich, think about it now. And if you want, write it to me here in the chat. Who would you be? Yeah, what would you be up to? Where would you reside if you had unlimited resources? And why did I prompt you to contemplate it? 
The connection between the person you are today and the person you imagined being, the accomplished person, without fears and with resources at your disposal, is called your dreams. Yeah, those are your dreams. So consider it. This result is something that is inside you, something that inspires you and defines you, something that speaks volumes about who you are at your essence. Today, I'll help you think more about your dreams. Are you coming? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go here. Yeah, it's important. Pay close attention to that because it's really crucial for the changes you need in your financial life. Finally, I urge you to do a simple yet powerful exercise with me so that you go out with your dreams for this year fully realized. What's up? Let's go. Shall we go? But first, if you don't know me, let me introduce myself. I'm Tayo Campos, financial mentor of the Christian Rich Ministry. I've dedicated my life to teaching people how to have their finances under control, ensuring they have extra money and invest for their dreams. Everything based on the Bible. Do you know why I talk about dreams with you? Because my mission, my purpose is to help people have the resources to fulfill their dreams. And we know that we can't make dreams come true without resources. Of course we can. And without having our finances under control, we need resources to fulfill our dreams. I have a strong belief that God created you with a much greater purpose. It is not solely about spending your entire life paying bills. No, there is more to it. Some individuals dream of merely having the ability to perform a home renovation, for instance. And that's something worth mentioning. Yes, like my student Francisca, who paid off all her debts in just 60 days and fulfilled her dream of renovating her house. Shall we take a look? Yes, check out Francisca's testimony now. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Francisca. Today, in the middle of renovating my house, I'll share the dream I had 10 years ago and didn't see a way to make it happen. But today, exactly two months that I've been in the Rich Christians crew, I started to see my dream come true. Today, the house renovation began. I joined Rich Christian due to my desire. I used to pray constantly, asking the Lord for means to renovate this house. So I would go to my finances and see I can't afford it. And praying to the Lord, he introduced me to the wealthy Christian. And I had no doubts that there I would learn great things. And I really learned. Today, two months later, I managed to organize my budget. I managed to pay off debts that I owed. I managed to have the financial reserve that I needed. And I didn't even realize it, but I already had money to start renovating my house. I just didn't continue because my eyes weren't closed to it. And during the two months of the course, the Lord blessed me by opening these eyes and I could understand that it was time to start this new project in my life. And today, as I'm recording this video, just a few hours ago, the renovation of my house started. Other people dream of having more resources for missionary work, like my student, Ana Lucia, who is the president of a missionary work in Africa. And she understood that she needed to learn how to manage finances to move forward with God's dream in her life. I am a missionary in a field in Africa. And as everyone already knows, the situation in Africa is sad, and I desire to assist the people there in finding ways to escape the financial and economic situation they are currently experiencing. But I myself didn't know many things I didn't know. I didn't know, I didn't know many things. Oh my God, the issue of modesty, me, a missionary, dedicated to the Lord, I gave myself completely, but unfortunately making mistakes, even against myself. I often skipped vacations due to insufficient funds. It was all in the name of honoring and glorifying God. As I had already saved money, I met the rich Christian and because of her, well, I'm doing better, you know. I am going to go back to the field, being able to help people there. So I praise God for the rich Christian, for the transformation it made in my life. So there was nothing left. And today, to the honor and glory of God, I will invest to do more for the cause in the name of Jesus. Thanks, girl. Remember that this is possible for anyone who applies the biblical principles of financial management, regardless of your country, city, or current financial situation. The Bible works all over the world, and I'm sure it won't stop working in your country. Tell me and write here if you agree that the Bible works in your country. Yes, does the Bible work in your country? So write to me now in the chat, yeah? Yes or yes? Yes, I wanna see, write it to me, write it to me. If the Bible is effective in your country, I will reiterate it because it is crucial that you possess this information. Now that you've understood the importance of being a good financial manager, being faithful to the resources that God puts in your hands, 
I want you to understand that to achieve this kind of transformation, this kind of dreams, the habit of investing is very important. We are going to have multiple classes in this location on planting and investments as well. I am going to provide you with information on the best location and also the worst location for investment purposes. However, I want you to be clear that investments are the means of transportation that will enable you to accomplish any dream that necessitates resources. Certainly, affirmative. Look, when we discuss God's dreams for our life, many individuals fail to comprehend why we articulate something that does not exist because the Bible states that God never sleeps, correct? Look, however, in actuality, yes, God never sleeps, but he, God, is the creator, and everything has commenced with his dreams, the dreams of God Almighty. And I have a strong desire to define for you what is the fundamental difference between desire, fantasy, and dreams, so that you understand this concept better here in our class today. Because a lot of people think that desire is a dream or fantasy. You know what the difference is? I am going to talk to you now. Desire is just ordinary dreams. I desire a chocolate. I desire some clothes. I desire a hug. These are things you desire in your day-to-day -day existence. Fantasies are desires that are not real and cannot be achieved. Ah, I desire to go to the center of the earth. I aspire to become an astronaut, but I am 90 years old. Well, fantasies are unreal things. On the other hand, dreams are not wishes. They are not just wishes, nor are they unreal fantasies. However, dreams are also not mere figments of imagination or illusions. The word sueño comes from the Latin somniki, which means a strong desire. It is a constant and intense aspiration. It is something that originates from deep within your heart. The Bible informs us that before I created you in the mother's womb, I had knowledge of you. And before you came out of the womb, I consecrated you and made you a prophet to the nations. Look how awesome the Bible is. It is located in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. You know, look, and from that biblical passage, we can realize if you are in Christ, all your desires of mind, all your constant aspirations never saw the light of day from you. They came before you were granted or experienced. This implies that prior to your birth, God had already conceived an understanding of your future identity. Every person is born with a specific role on earth. In the case of Jeremiah's, his role was to be a prophet, but each individual also has their own unique role, calling, and life mission. That paper has everything to do with your dream, which is the dream that God has for your life. In order to fully grasp this concept, please take a look at this. God also mentioned in Genesis 1.26, that is the way it is written. Let us proceed to fashion mankind in our own image, based on our likeness and resemblance. Exercise complete control and dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the domestic animals, all the earth and everything in it, and all the reptiles that crawl on the surface of the earth. And that signifies that it is in the book of Genesis, that prior to creating man, God had a vision of what he desired for mankind. In this specific scenario, while exercising dominion over the land, God dreamed of his desired future for mankind. Therefore, it is evident that this holds immense importance and should not be underestimated. Humanity was created to govern the planet. It was brought into existence by a divine being. We discussed yesterday about identity and understanding this is also a part of your identity in Christ. So it's beneficial that you possess this biblical concept that even prior to your birth, God already harbored desires and aspirations for you. Why is it crucial to have dreams? You can ask me, right? You know, yes or no, write in the chat, please. I would like to check if he is here today, yeah. Do you know why it is important to have dreams? Contact me, indicate if yes or no, I wanna check this, affirm or deny, you know. There's a lot of doubt and uncertainty. Certain individuals do, while others perhaps do not. Listen, aspirations serve as the driving force for your expedition on this planet. That's what should get a man going. Dreaming is like a compass that takes you where you need to go. Yum! The Bible says that without vision, a man perishes. That's in Proverbs 29, 18. Take a look at your Bible. In situations where there is no prophecy, the people tend to get corrupted and deviate from the right path. 
But the person who obeys the law is blessed. Yes, it is mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. So sleep possesses the ability to transport you on your journey. And it was precisely my dreams that led me to this place at this very moment in time. They took me to the Christian Rich Ministry, and it is them who have enabled me to be here today. Dedicating my time to ministry, encouraging you to dream big, encouraging you to have your finances under control, to make sure you have extra money available, to start investing wisely, to have big dreams. And to make you wait even more, I will disclose my dream for this year. I am confident that this dream originated in the heart of God. Stay with me, I'll tell you, okay? Until the end. So I'm going to tell you what my dream is. Do you want to know? Yeah? Because I already asked you, what is your dream? I am going to tell you my thing as well, right? The Bible states that God's dreams for our life are significantly larger than our own. Isaiah 55, do you like this verse? Yes or yes, Isaiah 55 is very rich. And when we lose focus on our purposes, you see on the dreams that God has for our life, we start living a self-centered and selfish life. Yes, without purpose and without the clarity of dreams, they end up lacking resources because we end up diverting resources towards something that was not God's purpose. I talked about the town of God that was rescued by Moses in Egypt. Do you remember? This town was seen as enslaved. The people worked only for food, housing, and minimal security measures provided. Yeah? So I would arrive at the end of the month and have nothing, and they would not do anything. They were working for the Pharaoh's purposes, and up until that moment, they were not working for God's purposes. I invited you to consider your financial situation, and if it is not like that either. Yeah, take a look. You could only pay for the food and maybe something for peace of mind. Yes or no? What's the difference between this life and that of a Pharaoh's slave? I have demonstrated that a person who does not spend their extra money ends up working every month just to get by and never has the resources to live out God's promises, God's dreams. So yes, they are a slave. I have lived for such a long period of time that I am not afraid to tell you God raised up Moses in order to set his people free and live a life within his purposes, within the dream that God had envisioned for him. Yes or yes. So there was a promise made for that town. However, while they lived in a defensive manner, only praying for liberation and working solely for the Pharaoh's purposes rather than for God's purposes, that promise was unable to be fulfilled. No, that is the reason why there was a rescue plan implemented by God in which he employed Moses as the instrument to execute his plan of deliverance. And today I am here cheering you on to be rescued from slavery and financial difficulties. Yeah, I'd like to encourage you to stop working for your bank's purposes and start working and living for the dreams that God has for your life. Just that in order to pursue God's dreams, there is a concept known as process. Isn't that right? Please take note now. Process. There is something referred to as the desert. This process is a designated place of preparation. What incarnation is this here desert? It's a place of preparation, of learning, to live God's dream for your life. It is the method to reach the destination. When I am prepared, I proceed along the path and employ the goal that God bestowed upon me, utilizing it for the correct purpose it was intended for. However, an extremely crucial alert. When I am unable to see the dream, I lose my sense of purpose and become disoriented along the path. So I seize the opportunity and create a golden calf. Something that does not please God. Was not that what happened to the people of Egypt? Do you remember? How many of you all understand what I am trying to say here? A large number of individuals are in debt. A lot of people don't have extra money. A lot of people don't have their finances under control. A lot of people ain't investing. She's being a slave to money and doesn't understand that this happened because she misused the gifts and talents that God put in her hands. They do not have the correct vision. They are not on the correct path. And many of them do not recognize it. And they are going to continue for an additional 40 years in the desert. I swear because that has already happened to me, yeah? 
I was already in a state of great indebtedness because I misused my gifts and talents. I was unaware of the biblical principles of good management. My knowledge of biblical finances was limited to the donation of tithes and offerings, nothing more. Yes, but there are many other biblical financial principles that we must implement. Upon realizing I was misusing what God had entrusted to me, I apologized and sought to make amends. As a result, a positive flow began to manifest in my life. Do you comprehend the significance of this transformation? Yes. Contact me in the chat if you answer yes, yes, yes. Also observe my purpose is precisely that, to save those individuals who have not yet realized this, because I endured significant hardships in order to become aware. I didn't have any help. I didn't have an intensive course to guide me. And if you, like me, are one of those indebted people or who today live as slaves to money, I know that you are going through a process of preparation from God, who is just waiting for you to learn how to manage well what little you have and then be put in charge of much. And this is in the word of God. It is not me who is talking about this. The path to the promised land could potentially open up. Could it have been completed in 40 days? Definitely. Is God capable of doing anything? Can God communicate? Yes, we will complete the journey in 40 days. However, no. What caused it to take 40 years to accomplish? Why? Because individuals took their sweet time to acquire knowledge. Because individuals took their sweet time to comprehend that they were not acting in accordance with the will of God. People took a significant amount of time to grasp God's purpose for their lives and got easily sidetracked. The time you invest in this process is of utmost importance. The duration it takes you to achieve your dreams relies on you. You are in the midst of the process. But when you don't understand principles and you don't understand the purpose, I lose the right focus. And that causes the process to take a significantly longer time and occasionally not even achieve it. And that is precisely what happened to them. Did they lose focus? Did they even make a golden calf for worship, an act that greatly displeased God? And why am I telling you all this today? Why? I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now. If you really want to live your promised land in the financial life, in the financial area, if you want to live the dreams that God has for you, you have to learn to fulfill principles and understand that all of this has to converge for God's purposes. Essentially, you need to learn three things. Make a note of them now, all right? Pay attention, the first one, right? It is important for your learning. Take note now. I am here. I am talking about something very important for your learning. Yes or yes? Want to learn more? Write in chat. Yeah, I'm here. Need to alter my finances. Yes, yes, yes. So make a note of it now. First learning one. Recognize and acknowledge your current situation. You are not a slave because you do not have a slave identity, but you might be living like one. That is the reality for the majority of Christians, but they are not actually experiencing it in their lives. And secondly, Learn to obey all the biblical principles of finance. Learning number three, having clarity about God's dreams for your life. This is of great importance. It is much more significant. What I am discussing today is much more than just tithes and donations. And this exercise is to wake you up. In general, there are three types of people, mainly Christians. Observe the type of person most individuals who grew accustomed to living in Egypt grew accustomed to living with slaves. They toil the entire month only to end up with no money at the conclusion, and they might even go into debt just to eat and have some security for themselves. Regrettably, these individuals constitute 81.2% of Christians who are living in conditions similar to that of slaves, consistently on the defensive, pleading with God for relief from their debts. And for those individuals, it is impossible to live the dreams of God while being in Egypt. You can either make the decision to leave Egypt or you can make the decision to stop being a slave. Yes, or you will be trapped in slavery indefinitely. You have to make a decision about what you desire. And the initial step to cease being a slave to money is to acknowledge it. 
It is not that straightforward, but it is the first step. There are two categories of individuals. The second category consists of those who have substantial wealth, allowing them to invest, but they lack understanding of the purpose of that additional money. They do not understand that there is a purpose of God for that money that goes through their hands, and that purpose is directly related to dreams and purposes. And what do these individuals do? I will speak to you now. I will inform you now, sorry. They grow desperate to expend that money on things they believe will provide them with satisfaction. They desire to eliminate that additional money in a speedy manner, and they utilize the money to fulfill their emotional requirements. These emotional needs can be fulfilled in numerous ways. The most prevalent ones are the need for validation from other people. Oh, I am going to spend a lot of money on fancy clothes just so that other people can admire me. There are also individuals who are enslaved by their beliefs and emotions regarding scarcity. They are afraid of lacking something, so they always decide to save and hoard everything because they believe that way they will have security. Those individuals hoard money without any specific purpose, simply out of fear of losing something. This is the type of person who even possesses gold in their hands, but lacks a clear purpose for it. It is effortless for her to create a golden calf and begin worshipping it as if it were a simple task. Yeah, you get it? It's a piece of cake. Why don't you have a purpose for that gold? The gold is here and it doesn't have a purpose. And the truth is that neither of these two types of people lives out God's purposes. There's a third kind of person. The third type is the top 5% of people who are good managers of everything that God puts in their hands because they understand that according to the Bible, this is an assignment that God has given them. Behold, competent stewards effectively oversee all that God entrusts to them, every single thing. Are they aware of the principles of good financial management? They have knowledge of all these principles, and as a result, they begin to generate wealth and have a positive impact on the lives of others. These individuals possess a deep understanding that if they have a clear comprehension of the law of servitude, they recognize that the more they serve people, the greater their ability to generate valuable resources becomes. They live out God's purposes for their lives. And if he's the kind of person who donates more, why does he have more to donate? But she doesn't adore everything because she's a good manager and understands that every seed that God puts in her hands has a defined purpose. And if you want to be part of that minority of people, if you want to live God's dreams for your life, I'm going to tell you what you need to do now. The initial step to becoming a good steward is acquiring the skill to effectively manage the resources that God entrusts to your care. What you have in your possession today is acquiring the ability to live according to principles, irrespective of whether you possess a single cent or a sum of $10 million. What do you have in your hands? You will even learn in this free course how you should distribute the seeds that come into your hands. If in the second phase of our intensive biblical finance course, we are going to have some very practical classes, that is the Christian week when I control my finances. During this week, I will talk to you about where you should distribute every seed that comes into your hands. But today, I want you to grasp the essence of this. Following these principles makes a tangible impact. God finds joy in obedience. He derives pleasure from the fulfillment of the principles. For God, it is not of great significance whether you possess a million at present or if you are indebted with a million. He assesses whether or not you are a competent manager of the responsibilities he entrusts you with. And the greater amount you are capable of managing, the greater amount he places trust in you. That's why he says that anyone who is faithful in small matters will be positioned in larger ones. It's a principle. This verse has nothing to do with deism like many churches teach out there. No. This verse pertains to your capacity to manage to fulfill the principles effectively. It's way more than a donation. It's so much more, it's everything. It may seem impossible to you, but these people understand that when they do their part, the promised land doesn't appear in 40 years, but in 40 days. Do you know how to do that in the process? 
That's why a lot of people don't believe how it's possible to have your finances under control in 60 days, like we see in the hundreds of testimonials from our students. There are individuals who believe they are actors, but they are not students, yet they are indeed. However, if that statement were true, if they were actors, there would be financial resources and creativity to employ such a large number of actors, isn't that right? There are a multitude of transformation cases, and behold, the truth is, what actually transpired to those individuals in that situation? Those individuals acquire knowledge of the route to the land that was promised. This is the genuine article. They accept their current condition and acknowledge that they have the ability to go through a shorter process if they meet the necessary qualifications for it. And especially if they decide to obey God in their financial life. And when I say obey, it's really important. I'm talking about following all the biblical principles of good financial management. So I want to wrap up our class here by inviting you to take these important steps in your life today. We're walking towards the end of our class, but today I still have some important teachings for you. Look, to learn, recognize your current situation. You are not a slave, but rather a free individual. You are not a slave, but you have the potential to become one. This is the harsh reality faced by the majority of Christians. So you have to, as step one, acknowledge your current situation. As step two, learn to follow all the biblical principles regarding finances and money management. In step three, it is crucial to have clarity about God's dreams for your life. This is an incredibly important aspect, isn't it? Look, so this is extremely, extremely important. If you want to know more, just contact me in the chat. I'd like to know more. I'd like to know more. I'd like more information regarding this. Where can I locate the highly dedicated people? To be super committed, where are the super committed ones? Look, all these steps are really important and you can't skip them. In the initial step, during step number one, Recognizing involves a mindset shift that is crucial for progress. It involves a metanoia, which is the transformation of the mindset through the Holy Spirit's power. It is constructing on the rock that we have been discussing since the classes of yesterday. Now, in the second step, which is to adhere to all the principles, I am restating so that you can make notes. I assure you that by the end of the course, if you don't miss a single minute of class, you will leave here knowing all of them. Because I know you want to know all of them, right? Yes or yes, write in the chat, yeah, yeah, I want to. So yeah, I want to finish this class today by encouraging you to dream. Now start dreaming something that you already know is God's will for your life. For example, one of God's purposes for man is for you to have a family. So start by forming a family. I'm the backbone of this family, a person who is going to live the simplest purposes. Another example, in the word of God, it says that a man should not have debt. You do not owe anyone anything except love. Therefore, when Miro, in case you have debts, you are not living in accordance with God's plans for your life as intended by him. As long as you do not have a big dream, you can, for instance, establish a goal to eliminate your debt. It is a possible dream, however, I want to have fun, not only to pay the bills, you know. God did not create you just for that purpose. So that cannot be your dream indefinitely. You have got to discover your true calling, my friend. Did I inform you about my process in the video I mentioned earlier? So if you happen to come across someone stating that they do not have dreams, kindly encourage them to initially envision repairing their life, having a stable family, a more secure financial life until they uncover their genuine dream and aspirations. And when you find your dream, it will create a need for you. Yes, it is going to bring you employment, that is accurate. But I dreamed of this one day, building a family, getting away from debts, a financially controlled life. During that process, I uncovered one of my true dreams, which is to assist individuals in repairing their financial lives and also discovering their dreams. I discovered my calling, my life mission in the process, because in order to make dreams come true, there are individuals who think that they will simply believe, oh, I'm going to fall from the sky, that resources are not required, and that's the end of it. For example, if I dream of being a good mother, I'll have to dedicate myself to that. If I dream of being the best professional in my city, I'll have to dedicate myself to this as well. You have to be intentional in the pursuit of your dreams. And an important piece of advice here, 
Typically, when God places a dream in your heart, he puts something of such magnitude that you are unable to accomplish it on your own. Yes, you require a team to execute your assigned task, but you also necessitate the involvement of God to bring it to a final completion. Always in the presence of God. God does not want to see you living independently from him. God should always be by your side, guiding and protecting you. I could never change the lives of so many students in the full program I manage my finances if I were by myself. God is doing his part in that dream all the time. It's together because I see that it's in the word. Isaiah 41, 13 is like this, because I take your God by your right hand. And let me inform you, do not be concerned. I will assist you. I always offer prayers to God. God is present. I place my plans in your hands, but I am right here next to you. You state that you will consistently assist me. And behold, it is mentioned in the book of Proverbs 16, verse 9. A person's heart devises their plans, but the Lord guides their steps along the path they should take. If here is the Lord who guides my steps, I am certain. I have no doubt about this. Do you understand? I know that you're here because this is an answer to your prayers and to the Lord that you should direct your steps. In these verses, you can observe something of great significance. You can perceive that when your dreams originate from the heart of God, it is an immensely significant matter that God directs and assists you in his role, guiding you closely because you are fulfilling your part of what is feasible and allowing God to accomplish the impossible. And here a lot of people get tangled up and think that because the dream is a promise from God, they expect God to do their part too, their part without doing anything. They simply wait without any intention or purpose in their actions. These people are not intentional. They are not actively sowing seeds or taking deliberate steps towards their goals. They desire glory, yet they are reluctant to confront the journey. They yearn for a joyful marriage, yet they fail to fulfill their part in making it a reality. Do you want to pass a public contest, but not study for hours and hours? Do you want your financial freedom, but don't want to learn how to have your finances under control? Do you want to get out of debt, but don't have a plan, a strategy for that, and they just sit around waiting for a miracle? And I want to talk to you here today a little more about how to be intentional in achieving your dreams and building your financial foundation on solid ground, right? Still this year, right? I'm going to tell you three very important points for your life. Take note of it. Point number one, decision, right? Decision indicates an attitude of passionately desiring the realization of a dream, a profound longing for it to come true. Do you recall the concept of dream that I just mentioned? Proceed and actualize your dream to make it a reality. And once you have made the decision, you absolutely have got to have the guts to take action. Decision. Point number two, determination. Determination is a conscious decision to go all the way right until the end without giving up. And how can I reach the end? You must understand how to manage your conditioned mind. And I will demonstrate to you precisely how to do it throughout the entire duration of Holy Week. I control my finances. Yes, it's a very practical week with recorded classes. Yes, because what prevents people from moving forward and doing what needs to be done is our conditioned mind. I'm going to teach you more about this at Christian Week. Yes. And if you haven't subscribed to the Christian Week yet and this ability to deal with the conditioned mind, I'm going to explain it to you there. You should sign up using the link in the description of this video, okay? Very good. And 3.3, the faith. Look, because when our dreams align with God's dreams, God becomes our partner in this joint venture and we can achieve extraordinary things together. Who wants to have God as their partner? Yes, it's delicious. If you have a business, you must have God as your partner. Although it may seem impossible to achieve your dream, if you have faith that this dream comes from within you, don't get discouraged. Perhaps you're only looking at the fitting part. Your part in the process, remember that it directs you that dreams depend on our action. Yes, on being intentional, but also on God's action. Commence to have faith that the dream is attainable and that God will also take action in the dream. Recognizing that you are not alone in the pursuit of that dream, 
And I'm going to speak to you directly from the word. Take your Bible now and look at Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, which are written like this. Place your trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding or knowledge. If you recognize it in your ways, he will guide you and make your path straight, leading you to success. You have to put everything in the Lord's hands, yeah? So at this moment, just trust and he will take action in your dream alongside you. And I am going to provide you with more information. Look, it is mentioned in the Bible, specifically in Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, it goes like this. Because my thoughts are not the same as your thoughts, neither are your ways the same as my ways, declares the Lord. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are elevated above and beyond your thoughts. Look, be intentional in your dream. And it has these three points. Look, point one, decision making. Point two, determination. Point three, faith. Yes, write to me in the chat at this very moment right beside me. The three points at this time, decision, determination, and faith. And when it comes to faith, Kirani is here to remind you to never abandon your dreams. No, don't be the type of person who extinguishes dreams. The Bible states that the devil, the adversary of our souls, arrived to steal, murder, and annihilate. Annihilate what? crushing our dreams. So every time it comes to dreams, he wants to somehow steal, kill, or destroy that dream of yours, the enemy of our souls. You fabricate falsehoods such as, ah, I concoct lies about not having dreams, about not deserving to have dreams, about being too old to have dreams, and so on and so forth. However, that is all a falsehood. This was brought into existence by the adversary of our inner beings. He arrived with the intent to steal, kill, and destroy. Do not believe the lies and falsehoods propagated by others. It is very strong and I know it, yeah? Yes, let's go. Like I said previously, it must be intentional to make your dreams a reality. In order for it to be intentional, it means that I need to put into practice a word that is essential for that dream to come true. Please grab your Bible now and let's take a look at Luke 14, 28 and 30, which goes like this according to the text. I'm going to talk to you about the verse of the tower, which goes like this. Which one of you, if you want to build a tower, doesn't first sit down and calculate the price to see if you have enough money to complete it? Because if he lays the foundations and is not able to finish them, everyone who sees it will laugh at him, saying, this man started to build and was not able to finish. That's how it is in the Bible. So listen. It does not make any sense for you to dream about the tower. You have got to plan. So God will bless your dreams. You got to do your part. For example, if I dream of getting married and starting a family, will I need resources to do it? Am I going to need to perhaps study how to be a good husband or a good wife? If I am aware that 46% of couples argue about financial matters, maybe you should also consider studying more about finances if I want to sustain and strengthen my marriage in the long run. This is just to give you an example of a marriage and relationships that have been ruined because of financial problems, for example. Look, I'm going to tell you a really short story. I have a friend named Giselle who before her separation, I used to ask if love had come to an end because I was feeling extremely concerned. I couldn't believe this was happening with her. She informed me that no, no, Taylor, love did not come to an end. It endured. The problem was that they lacked understanding when it came to the usage of money, particularly in relation to expenses, you know? Because he, her spouse, would combine the funds from his income with the funds from the small bakery that he co-owned together with his family members for financial stability. They did not separate the bills and that stressed her out a lot until she could not take it anymore and ended the marriage. How awful. Another example here. If I have the dream of taking a trip to Israel, I got to start checking out the price of the ticket, hotel, what expenses I'm going to have and plan myself for that. And is that a dream? Everything good? Am I going to plan that? Usually a big part of the dreams that God gives us require resources. That is the place where dream planning comes into play. And that is the topic I am going to begin discussing planning.
During Christian week, I manage my finances and I want you to be super committed to this, okay? Where are the highly dedicated individuals? Let's begin, let's go the whole distance. Yeah, where can they be found? Send me a message in the chat, it has commenced and I will persist until the very end. It's fantastic that you all are here with me, super, super. Are we approaching the conclusion, correct? And while the Christian Week event hasn't arrived yet, maybe you already have your dreams for this year, or maybe not, that doesn't matter. I want to invite you now to think about them so that we can put them into practice during Christian Week. Let's ascertain it for the exercise we have today. So the act of writing holds tremendous power and influence. Yeah, yeah, look, now get a piece of paper and a pen. We are going to do an exercise together here. Shall we proceed? Take those dreams and put them on paper. Then let's write them down and define them together. Due to the fact that when I reach the second stage of Christian week, I am going to commence providing you with some practical tools to take action in support of these dreams you have, okay? Is that clear to you? But my goal here today was to give you important sub-cycles to guide you in defining those dreams. Because as the cat expressed in Alice's tale in Wonderland, you have knowledge, you see? He states that if you do not have a clear destination in mind, any path will suffice for your journey. But now you have a path to where you want to go. And that's why I've dedicated this precious time to encourage you to dream and start defining your dreams right now. After we complete this class, follow these five steps that I will give you now once we finish here. So step one, go to a really peaceful place. For the second step, now ask God to reveal in your heart the dreams he has for you and trust in his divine guidance. Be intentional. Initiate the process of writing. At the very least, make a point to jot down the 10 dreams that come to mind initially. Do not judge those dreams. Simply write, no matter how absurd they may seem, and never give up. Four, sort those dreams in order of importance, with one being the most important and 10 being the least important. Step five, select the top three dreams and concentrate your energy on turning them into reality within this year. Take this as a foundation to build your financial base. Start being intentional from now on to achieve these three dreams. I know you will probably need resources to fulfill your dreams. Everything is good, yeah. In the second stage of this course, commencing on the upcoming Thursday, I assume responsibility for my finances and I will discuss the necessary steps to acquire these resources and begin turning these dreams into reality. I desire my students to have the ability to do their part and in doing so, enable God to do his part to make their dreams a reality, okay? Because God, you know, God did not merely create you for the purpose of spending your life solely on paying bills, if you know what I mean. And one more thing he initiated, let us proceed completely affirmative. And you can also assist with that by sharing this intensive and complimentary course with the individuals you are acquainted with and encouraging them to pursue their dreams. And tonight we are going to have class number four, which is definitely going to be unmissable. You will find out what has been causing all the trouble in your financial life. Isn't that right? I'm going to talk to you about something really important. How to make more money and have your finances under control. I will give you a highly potent key about this. And all of that is based on the Bible, you know. How to increase your income and effectively manage your finances. Let's discuss this. If you want to acquire the mindset and behaviors for earning more money, you must enroll in class four. It will be an eye-opening class that can help you change your financial life forever. So go ahead and click on the link for class four now and make sure to activate the reminder so that YouTube can let you know when it starts and you don't miss it, okay? Team, if you have the link for class four, please put it in the chat, okay? I don't know if he is available, right? If we have, right? And look more. To obtain your complimentary certificate, you will need to know the current day's class keyword. And you will also need to remain in the WhatsApp group for the event until the conclusion. You will also need to fill out the attendance list that the team will put in the comments, okay? Because you're dedicated, you might also have a chance to win a $200 transfer that I'll discuss at the end of our intensive biblical finance session. Sound good? Oh, I have something else important. 
there is a truly special documentary that it is crucial for you to watch the entirety of it. Very cool, a doc about the power of the Bible in your financial life. The key word for today is dreams. It explores how the Bible impacts our financial decisions and shapes our dreams. The specified keyword is dreams. The corresponding class phrase is, God's dreams are of a greater magnitude and scale compared to my own aspirations. It is the phrase of the class. Please do not forget to come back at night and invite one of your acquaintances so that we can be together in our next class. Yes, God bless you and see you soon. Goodbye and take care. See you in the next class. Because after the rich Christian, I start to see life in a different way. My financial problems were fading away. A mortgage on my house, which I would take another eight years to pay off. I tell you that today I own a paid off house. There are several other debts that were troubling me and having the ability to do something that had not occurred in years in my life. Having extra money, having extra money of mine, my money never used to be extra. So managing to have some extra to invest as advised by the rich Christian in the portfolio we are following, following the completion of the course, I successfully managed to have some money left over from my salary, which was an achievement I hadn't been able to accomplish for a number of years. I managed to pay off the debts, a debt of 23,958, if I'm not mistaken at the time. In a span of 60 days, I managed to completely pay off this debt. This to me was an invaluable accomplishment that I can't put a price on. In addition to that debt, later on I also paid off another debt, so for me this was crucial. So at this point in time, now that I have a certain amount of money left over from my salary, I started making an investment as well, I began investing some money. And I did not have a car, I used to walk. I have a car now, it is not a fancy one, but I have a car in my garage now. This, in my opinion, is absolutely priceless. Wow, what an overwhelming feeling. I am filled with immense happiness and gratitude. I state that the wealthy Christian was positioned in my existence at a critical juncture. It was of utmost importance. So, the rich Christian was truly remarkable. It compelled me to completely empty myself and wholeheartedly believe that those incredible people were there to provide unwavering support, invaluable mentorship, and invaluable guidance on how to truly eliminate debts, achieve a well-balanced financial life, make wise investments, generate additional income, unearth hidden talents, and gain clarity on my desired path in life. I've already organized myself. I no longer have to borrow from loan sharks. I no longer have the private shops and businesses I had before because it was getting difficult. Everything is under control. My financial life is completely under control. I don't have that worry. One of the things I constantly had was power cuts. I couldn't handle it. Today I don't have. Sometimes I see a cutting car passing by and I breathe like this. Then I don't have. I am calm. Everything is up to date. The year 2020 was the first year that ended that I ended with 1,500 reis. I can say, thanks to the rich Christian, I'm at peace. I can have a much calmer financial life. Financially, I'm not a slave to finances. The debts already existed, car financing, still paying for it, so there were quite a few things there. Open debts, paying for land in installments, right? So that bar where we stayed, wow, and now what are we going to do, right? And that's when I started studying. I started the course slowly and began to see the transformations, many transformations. Reduction in bills, surprisingly, I learned to do extra activities that we didn't even pay attention to before because we were in our comfort zone. So I acquired new skills and knowledge. I established an online store through the course where they educate us on the importance of continuous self-improvement, undergoing a shift in mindset, thoughts and attitudes, and constantly striving to better ourselves. And that helped a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So with each step I took within the course, I saw the changes. And in the end, it was success, total success, both material and spiritual. It was wonderful. I had some loans which were insured. And there we learned how to reduce these loans, how to pay, how to pay off these loans. And we kept practicing this exercising control. For us, it wasn't enough to do things halfway. It only served us to do it right, to do it completely. Today, I'm able to sleep in peace.
The complete transformation in our lives has been absolutely incredible and utterly profound. I initiated the story by discussing the debts I had, and presently, we are actively engaged in the process of making investments. My dear friend and partner in this venture, we are investors. At this moment, we were able to contribute and provide assistance to individuals in need, which is also a very impressive principle that makes a difference in people's lives. Today, I feel at peace. Today, I sleep peacefully. We still face our life's challenges. It doesn't stop. But today, I can plan, organize myself to achieve, reaching new things every day.